In section 10.8, we will be discussing the power theorems. After watching this video, you will be able to apply the power theorems to various types of problems. The following theorems involve products of the measures of segments. For the first diagram to the right, we notice we have two chords intersecting. The first power theorem that we are going to discuss is called the chord-chord power theorem. And it states that if two chords of a circle intersect inside the circle, then the product of the measures of the segments of one chord is equal to the product of the measures of the segments of the other chord. Let's apply it to the diagram at the right. We can say that segment AE times segment EC must equal segment BD times segment EB. We took it chord by chord. Notice I did yellow times purple is equal to blue times red. You can also do purple times yellow is equal to red times blue, as long as you're keeping with the same chord each time. Let's go ahead and prove this theorem. I'm going to draw in segments AD and BC because two points determine a segment. Now let's focus on the angles that we have in the diagram using our prior knowledge. We can say that this angle DAC is congruent to angle DBC because both of those inscribed angles intercept the same arc DC. We can also say that angle ADB is congruent to angle ACB because both of those angles intercept the same arc AB. Then we also have some vertical angles that we can mark in the diagram. As a result, we get two similar triangles. You can prove triangles AED and BEC similar by angle angle. Then we can set up a proportion because corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. And then using the means extremes product theorem, we've reached our conclusion. In number two, we can see two secants in the diagram. So we are going to discuss the secant-secant power theorem, which states that if two secant segments are drawn from an external point to a circle, then the product of the measures of one secant segment and its external part is equal to the product of the measures of the other secant segment and its external part. So let's go ahead and apply it to this diagram. We can say that this entire secant segment AC times the external part BC must equal the entire secant segment EC times its external part CD. And that's our secant secant power theorem. In the third diagram, you should notice that we're working with a tangent segment as well as a secant segment. So the power theorem that we are going to discuss here is called the tangent secant power theorem. And it states that if a tangent segment and a secant segment are drawn from an external point to a circle, then the square of the measure of the tangent segment is equal to the product of the measures of the entire secant segment and its external part. Let's apply that theorem to the diagram on the right. We want to take the square of the tangent segment, which is just a fancy way of saying take your tangent segment and multiply it by itself. So our tangent segment here is CD. So we can say that CD times CD must equal our entire secant segment, which is AC, times the external part which is BC. Instead of writing CD times CD, you can write CD squared is equal to AC times BC as well. Let's go ahead and prove the tangent secant power theorem. So I am going to draw in two segments here. I'm going to draw in segments AD and BD because two points determine a segment. If you notice here, we now have a tangent chord angle, angle BDC. And we have an inscribed angle, angle DAB. 
and they're both intercepting arc BD, which means that those two angles are congruent. If you notice, we have the smaller triangle CBD inside of the larger triangle CAD. We can use reflexive property on that angle C since those two triangles share that angle, which now results in two similar triangles. The large triangle CDA is similar to the smaller one CDB. Setting up our proportion and cross multiplying, we can reach our conclusion. I want to provide you with a way to help you remember the secant secant power theorem as well as the tangent secant power theorem because I understand the theorems are quite wordy. So to remember the secant secant power theorem, you could think of it as taking the secant times the external part and setting that equal to the secant times the external part. And for our tangent secant power theorem, you could think about taking the tangent and multiplying it by itself, or if you want to remember it as tangent squared, you can write it like that. So the tangent squared must equal the secant segment times its external part. We'll pick back up with the second part of the notes in just a moment.